A live look at the Meadowlands racetrack in East Rutherford, New Jersey, the center of the harness racing world on the biggest day in the sport. It's Hamiltonian Day. And our main event features one fabulous filly taking on Tactor's army of talented colts. We'll explain as the story unfolds. The 2015 Hamiltonian is straight ahead on CBS Sports Network. Since its beginning 90 years ago, the Hamiltonian, America's greatest trotting race, has given us some of the sport's most memorable moments. Like in 1989, the only Hamiltonian dead heat in history. To the wire, Park Avenue, Joe, probe, here's the finish, too close to call! And 1996, the last time a filly was able to beat the boys on her way to Horse of the Year honors. As they hit the wire, Continental victory has done it! She wins the Hamiltonian. And that brings us to today, when the first female in nearly a decade takes on the toughest of assignments. Her name, Mission Brief. And like race winner Continental Victory and the game but beaten pampered princess before her, this filly's brilliance is unquestioned. There, she's all alone and she is all yours. Mission Brief, Mission Brief in 152 and two. But almost like a mirror image of last year, Hall of Fame trainer Jimmy Tactor has strength in numbers and in a string of talented and top-ranked Colts, giving him the hand to beat and the possibility of back-to-back -back Hamiltonian wins. Once again today, memorable moments await. It's Harness Racing's most prestigious race and most coveted prize. 90 years young and still going strong, the 2015 Hamiltonian is next. In the shadow of the New York City skyline, the sun shines brightly today on the fun, festive, and carnival-like atmosphere that is Hamiltonian Day at the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Ideal weather and track conditions are in place, Mother Nature doing her part to contribute to the greatest day in harness racing. And what a lineup we have for you today. First leg of the pacing triple crowd. It's the Cane Pace 61st edition three-year-old pacers. And we've got a real star in that division this year. His name, Wiggle It, Jiggle It. Gotta love it. Coming up about 413. And then followed by the Philly counterpart to the Hamiltonian. It's the half million dollar Hamiltonian Oaks. 440 post time there and then the showcase event in the sport of harness racing. It's the 90th edition of the Hamiltonian and once again, a $1 million purse. Now we're gonna bring you the morning line for the Hamiltonian final. We had two eliminations earlier. We'll talk about them, but it's the Philly mission brief. She was spectacular in her limb and she has been made by line maker Darren Zakali, six to five. Pinkman, the other elimination winner, at five to two. What a great matchup this is going to be. Hello, everyone. I'm Gary Seibel, and welcome to CBS Sports Network's coverage of the Hamiltonian. Joining me once again today, longtime Meadowlands racing analyst and odds maker Dave Brower. And shortly, we'll say hello to the third member of our broadcast team, Justin Horowitz. He's in the paddock getting ready to talk to some of today's key players. But first, Dave, let's talk about our main story today. First time since 2007, it's a Philly versus the Colts. And Gary, it's been 19 years since a Philly won the Hamiltonian, all the way back to 1996 and the great Continental victory. Today, Mission Brief will try to become the 14th Philly to do it, but she faces a daunting task against trainer Jimmy Tactor's four-pack of Colts and Geldings. It's the classic matchup. It's the girl against the boys. The stage is set, and in just under an hour, we're gonna find out if it's Mission Hamiltonian or Mission Impossible. Harness Racing's defending drive Driving champion Yannick Jingra, very tough decision for him. He drives both Pinkman and Mission Brief, both divisional champions last year at two. What a tough decision he had to make, and he had to make that decision fast. For more on that, let's go to Justin Horowitz. Justin. Thanks, Gary. Just moments ago, Yannick Jingra literally made the million dollar decision. He goes with the Philly Mission Brief over Pinkman. Yannick, why'd you pick the Philly? 
Well, I had made, I had made my mind that uh, you know it was going to be the horse of race best today. Um, you know, the two trainers I drive a lot for, two horses I've started from the beginning, so I, I really didn't have a, a, a choice that way. I didn't uh, have commitment or feelings one way or the other. So I, I, I had in my mind the horse that raced best in, in the elimination, that's who I was going to drive. What specifically in the elimination tipped your hand to go with Mission Brief versus Pinkman? Because Pinkman actually went a fifth of a second faster. Uh, he, he raced very well, too. He was used hard the first quarter, and he got covered up, and uh, you know he had good trot in the stretch. Her, uh, I mean, the way she handled herself. In the first turn, she was really crowded, um, and that really impressed me that she was, she was able to handle that like a professional. Uh, I moved her to the half in the big half, and I, I made a move from sixth. So she was used pretty hard for the first half, and then down the stretch, she had plenty left. Um, and I, I just, no, that was my decision. You know, it's unfortunate you pick off some, one horse, but, you know, you're going to make a, chase, a choice and live with it. After losing last year in heartbreaking fashion with the huge favorite Father Patrick, what would it mean to you today to finally win your first Hamiltonian with a filly? Well, it would be awesome, and I mean, the Philly, you no, know, it'd be just a bonus. But just winning the Hamiltonian, you know, I, that's why, like, I made the pick, and I just wanted, you know, to drive the horse. I had to think I had the best chance, but uh, winning the Hamiltonian would be, it'd be awesome. Well, he's never finished better than seventh in the Hamiltonian, but you have to like his chances today with the Philly. Guys, back to you. All right, Justin, tough decision for Yannick Jingra. Tough break for six-time Hambo winner John Campbell, and I mean break. He broke his wrist last Friday in a baby race here at the Meadowlands, and his string of 32 consecutive years with a drive in the Hambletonian ends this year. Tough break indeed. We'll talk to John later on. And coming up, the Hambletonian and the Oaks later on in our program. First up, it's the Cane. That's the Trotters Club here at the Meadowlands. We'll be back. It's time. Oh, what a way to get things started. National Pro Fast Picks. History and excellence on display. On CBS Sports Network. Brittany Farms is Harness Racing's number one breeder in percentage of millionaires from foals bred. Brittany Farms is the number one breeder of Breeders' Crown Champions. And Brittany Farms is the number one breeder in average earnings per starter. It all makes a Brittany Farms yearling your best buy. Only at Fazoli's can you get delicious, made-to-order, fresh Italian meals for every member of the family. Like our new Ultimate Bowls, with freshly roasted chicken, mushrooms, and broccoli in a rich, creamy Alfredo sauce. Or spaghetti with zesty Italian sausage, crisp bacon, and our signature meatballs. And for a limited time, you can get all these savory flavors for one fantastic price. Which means the only thing left is to relax and enjoy another unlimited breadstick. Only at Fazoli's. From the very start, I wanted FitCore to be different. If you come to me, it's it's because you want to do what I do, because I don't do what other people do. It's kind of like creating a brand for myself. Your business is unique. Your marketing should be too. With Vistaprint, it will be. Put your personal touch on 500 business cards starting at just $9.99. Just enter promo code TV500 at Vistaprint.com. Stay true to yourself. You can do this how you want to do it, and somebody else is going to think that's awesome and want to do it that way too. Vistaprint.com. Technicians needed. The transportation industry is growing. If you're good with your hands and want to work on the world's best brands, your training starts here at Universal Technical Institute. We only hire UTI graduates. That is our preferred method of hiring. In fact, four out of five UTI grads get jobs. I like my job because I love the new technology and learning every single day on the job with all the master technicians. Your new career starts your first day at UTI. Are you ready? Call now. Imagine a world with thousands of characters and epic gameplay. I'm going to need some more health here. Okay, that's enough health. Gamefly. Start your free trial at Gamefly.com. Product shown rated E through M. At French's, we know what we're made of. Only the finest quality ingredients. Introducing new French's ketchup. No preservatives, no artificial flavors, and unlike some others, no high fructose corn syrup. Just great ketchup taste. New French's ketchup. The French's way. College football is finally back. A nice fresh batch of rankings for you. Get ready for the playoff pursuit with Inside College Football Season Preview. Wednesday at 6, only on CBS Sports Network. 
The 2015 Hamiltonian Stakes on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Hanover Shoe Farms, the world's leading standard bred breeder, and the leading breeder of Hamiltonian winners. Look for the Hanover Shoe Farms yearlings selling this fall in Lexington and Harrisburg. By the New Jersey Division of Travel and Tourism. New Jersey, we're for you. And by the Hamiltonian Society, supporting and encouraging the breeding of standard bred horses for more than 90 years. Starting way back 1926 at the Syracuse Fairgrounds, now in its 90th year, welcome to Hamiltonian Day, now at the Meadowlands, just eight miles away from the Big Apple and the New York City skyline, a beautiful new facility here at the track. Don't forget, later on, our feature event, the Hamiltonian, the Oaks will precede that. But for more, let's go over to Justin Horowitz. Jimmy, how surprised and disappointed are you that Yannick Jingra picked off your horse? I was actually really surprised because I thought my horse from the 10 post Ray raced a lot better than uh, she did and uh, and hopefully I'm uh, right on that because I thought he raced a tremendous race he had a hard first uh, half and uh, and uh, you know I mean the horse is just a fantastic horse to win or every race so it's going to be a run for the money here. It's not completely unprecedented as Pinkman had won a Sire Stakes and the Valley Victory last year with a driver other than Yannick Jingra. So you settle on Brian Sears. How did you make that decision? Well, you know, I mean, uh, Brian Sears, he's, he won these races. You know, I mean, he have, uh, you know, uh, well, he's maybe one, uh, one of the best in the sport. So, you know, I mean, Brian, uh, you know, I normally get it do done. You know, he handled pressure very well. So I thought uh, I could draw with myself. But, you know, I, you know, hello. I mean, I drive when, when I need to have to, but this horse, he, he need to just have somebody a little bit better than I am. Well, without Yannick Jingra, Jimmy Tactor still going to go to try to become the sixth trainer to win two Hamiltonians in a row. All right, Justin, thanks so much. A little disappointment yeah. there from Jimmy Tactor, no question about that. It's funny, he said settle for Brian Sears. <laughs> uh, you know, Sears has won a couple of Hamiltonians himself, has been the leading driver in the sport for a couple of years, but un unbelievable. Anyhow, let's take a look at the current odds for the Kane Pace, 61st edition, first jewel in the Triple Crown of Pacing. And here you go, Gary. These are the lowest odds you can possibly have on any tote board. Wiggle It, Jiggle It is up there right now at one to nine. What that means is if you bet $2 to win on him, you're gonna get $2.10 back. And maybe that should be, because he has just been a dominant three-year-old so far. It'll be a little bit of a test today, especially since it's been three weeks since he won the Meadowlands Pace in such dominating fashion, but he's the most dynamic horse in the sport. He's the one that everybody talks about, and the story is great. George Teague owns and trains with Clyde Francis, and it's Teague's son, 24-year-old Montrell, who drives. They're having quite a ride with this colt so far early in the stakes season. Wiggle It Jiggle It is certainly the leader in his division. They call it the Glamour Division, the three-year-old pacing Colts, and he has burst on the scene. He is a son of million-dollar earner Mr. Wiggles, who, by the way, was also campaigned by George Teague Jr., and George won the Cane Pace back in 2006 with Total Truth. And the Cane Pace is a uh, race that has a whole lot of rich, deep history. This is the fifth racetrack, the Meadowlands, where it will be held. That's why we all think that the stakes record of 148 and Four is in severe jeopardy. That was said a couple of years ago at Tioga Downs by Dynamic Newth. These horses can go a whole lot faster than that. There you see the gelding on the racetrack. And remember, folks, George Teague has said since he's a gelding, there's no potential stud value here. He's got an ambitious schedule mapped out for this three-year-old throughout the rest of the season, including legs of the Triple Crown. And he may even end up at the Little Brown Jug, which we will broadcast live right here on CBS Sports Network on September 24th. One of the other major contenders in the Cane Pace is a horse by the name of Dudes the Man. Dudes the Man won last week's Delvin Miller Adios Pace for the Orchids after six straight losses. He was favored in this final despite being third in his elimination the week before. I guess he had shown enough in his elim that the betting public made him the favorite and it paid off. He was really, really super in the final of the Adios. And you see that amazing equipment that he wears. It's called the Shady Daisy Shadow Roll with those little spikes that keep him from seeing things out on the track. He was super out at the Meadowlands here. He was second in the Meadowlands pace to uh, final to wiggle it, jiggle it here. And he's New York based and Delaware owned. 
So, dude's the man, wiggle it, jiggle it. That looks like a head to head battle there, but wiggle it, jiggle it. Big, big favorite on the tote board currently. Let's once again join Justin Horowitz who talked to George Teague Jr. earlier. George, you spent $35,000 to give Wiggle It, Jiggle It a chance to supplement into the cane pace. What is it about him that gives you the confidence to put up that kind of money? Oh, uh, 15 for 16. Uh, that kind of blows your confidence a little bit. He was super last start. I mean, 47 and 4, um, and really sprinted real strong for the last eighth of a mile. So I'm hoping that he just keeps paying off. You've had lots of good horses in the past, but this one with the family, your son driving, and Clyde being the trainer, what's this family affair been like? No, it's a lot of fun. My kids here, grandkids here, a couple cousins. Uh, sister, so no, it's, it's been a lot of fun for all of us. Now, when he wins at the Meadowlands, there's that old song, Wiggle It, that plays on the loudspeaker. We know the song now. Is there a dance maybe you can show us that we all got to be dancing when Wiggle It, Jiggle It comes down the stretch of winter? No, I'm going to leave that up to you. I ain't got no dancing me. No, no dancing for you, but certainly a fast horse. Wiggle It, Jiggle It, probably a good chance to break the record for the fastest Triple Crown race. That's 148 and 4. All right, Chester, we'll see if George does any huffing after Wiggle It, Jiggle It's performance in the Kane Pace. In the Arsenal, won the Art Rooney Pace over the half mile track at Yonkers Raceway. At the end of May, his trainer, Kelvin Harrison, calls him a small but nice colt. Harrison, a native of New Zealand, came to the U.S. in 72. This is his 50th year as a trainer. And Gary, everybody in the business loves Big Red Kelvin Harrison, so everybody kind of roots for in the Arsenal. But let's put it this way. He comes off a big disappointing effort in that Meadowlands Pace final. That may be why he is adding first time Lasix today. I spoke to Kelvin after the Meadowlands Pace. He told me he thinks in the Arsenal choke down. That's when a horse shuts his air off and then will tire after that. He's got a ton of speed from the outside post with Brian Sears, and they're going to use it. He'll make his presence felt early. And what about Art Speak? He's number five he was the two-year-old champion in the sport has not returned really as the same horse he's the only millionaire in the field he is seeking to reach top form for his trainer Tony Alanya he's got the perfect mid-pack post here he's gonna sit and watch and then try to pounce Scott Zeron has the assignment on art speak for trainer Tony Alanya three wins and nine starts this year for art speak who again, a million dollar winner, made three quarters of a million last year. And we talk about not having the same kind of season. Well, he has banked a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah, that, that's not chump change, yeah, no doubt right. about that. One last horse to look at too, Gary, maybe number eight, Yankee Bounty. It's already been a huge day for Ron Burke and Yannick Jingra. And they started the day with a winner. That's always a big thing on Hamiltonian Day. You need good mojo to get started. Wiggle it, jiggle it at one to five. He's a Meadowlands pace winner. Six Meadowlands pace winners have also captured the Kane Pace and some great names, Dave. Nia Tross, Ralph Hanover on the road again, Artificial One More Laugh, and most recently Captain Treacherous, who did it in 2013. Western Dreamer, Western Hanover, Cam Fella, you know, the list goes on and on. This race is uh, just one of the great jewels, you know, of the pacing event, and we get a chance to show a pace on the Hamiltonian show. It's a pleasure. We are set for the first jewel in the pacing triple crown. It's the Kane Pace 61st edition. Getting set to call his 16th Hamiltonian later on today is track announcer Ken Workington, one of the best in the business. Let's go to Ken right now. Ken? All right, they're near the gate, guys, for race 11, the Kane Pace for $319,400. Big favorite here, one to five, two, wiggle it, jiggle it. It's post time, preferred equine starting gate is rolling. Wiggle it, jiggle it here, one to five. Fresh off his Meadowlands Pace victory, 147. And four fifths, world record equaling mile there. At four to one, the one dude's the man, the Adios champion. Field of nine on gate race 11, the Kane Pace. Race 11 here at the Meadowlands, picking up speed. Here they come. They're off. Yankee Bounty's out fast. In the Arsenal blasts off from the outside with good speed there. So Wiggle It Jiggle It's out sprinted. And from the inside, Dudes, the man, the Adios winner, cuts the corner. Four across the track. Oh, the scramble's on here. And Wiggle It Jiggle It's looking to wrestle command from Dudes, the man. And it's an early tussle here. In the Arsenal on the outside, third. Yankee Bounty is off the speed in fourth. Those four together, a gap of two to Delt, a winner in the fifth position. Three and a half, four more to Hall of Terror, followed by Arts Speak, Rolling Ring of Fire. One is a lonely number. Oh boy, 25 and four. Hot quarter here and in the arsenal. 
pressing wiggle it, jiggle it, who's getting roughed up here. Montreal Teague and Brian Sears, eyeball to eyeball, slugging it out stride for stride to the half. Dudes the man is right there in third. Yankee Bounty and Jingra stocking the speed from fourth off a half, a dazzling 52 and one. Gap of two to Delta winner fifth. Then it's a wide gap of some eight lengths. Hall of Terror not keeping pace. Around that one comes Artspeak. Then roll and ring of fire, and one is a lonely number. Wiggle it, jiggle it, still by half a length. In the arsenal on the outside. Dudes the man from the inside locked in now. And here comes Delta winner looking to catapult off the hot pace. And Artspeak gets in gear to the outside off the hot fractions. Yankee Bounty on the rail from way, way back. Rolling ring of fire, three quarters, 120 and four. In the stretch, wiggle it, jiggle it, not today. Through the stretch and to the wire, it's Delta winner drawing clear. Delta winner by two, Heartspeak into second, wiggle it, jiggle it next, and Yankee Bounty, Dave Miller and Delta winner. You've got a winner at 26 to one in the cane. Delta winner, then Heartspeak. Dudes the man and wiggle it, jiggle it, 147 and three, a stakes record. Dealt a winner, a son of 1994, Cam's Card Shark, owned by the same connections, Jeff Snyder of New York, was dealt a winning hand here, no question about it, Dave. I guarantee you that the Buckeye driver, David Miller, saw that battle unfolding early on and said, I'm having no part of that. Wiggle it, jiggle it, roughed up and roughed up big time. I think Dave Miller was just licking his chops as the speed duel was on. Wiggle it, jiggle it, and Montreal Teague refusing to give up the early lead to in the arsenal. They blazed around the racetrack, and you know it's going to be a closer. There's Delta Winner who stalked in mid-pack, angled wide and Dave Miller just keeps him pacing home. Art Speed could do no better than second here. What a way to win your first race of the year. He was 0 for 7 before today. Delta winner now a cane pace champion. Well he had a very successful season at two. Five wins and six starts with a third place finish but as you point out 0 for 7 but this race just set up for a closer no question about it. 52 and 1 to the half. How often do you see that here at the Meadowland? Not very or often. anywhere. Not very often and not very often do you see odds of 26 Six to one on a classic winner in the cane pace. Delta winner Dave Miller, nice job of just laying off the pace. And uh, some high profile connections. Like you said, owner Jeffrey Snyder, trainer Mark Silva, and we're going to talk to the winner, I guess, when we come back. 147 and three, previous record from Dynamic Youth, 148 and four. We'll hear from the winning connections when we return. Ellen and Michelle Crawford welcome you to Crawford Farms. Located in upstate New York, Crawford Farms houses over 150 fabulously bred broodmares, racehorses, and retirees on 1,000 beautiful acres. Crawford Farms, a boutique breeding operation, sells their top New York, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey yearlings in the Morrisville State Sale and the Lexington Selected Sale. For up-to-date information, visit CrawfordFarms.com. Only Dove Men Plus Care Antiperspirant has 48 hour sweat protection plus one quarter moisturizer technology. It keeps your underarms dry without irritation. Tough on sweat, not on skin. Oh, Mallory! Christy! You got your auto insurance from the General too! I needed full coverage for my new car, and they saved me money. Did you know the General now has renter's insurance? I didn't know that. Yeah, let's take a break and talk about it. At The General, you can get an anonymous online auto insurance quote with low payments, choice of due date, and check out our renter's insurance. For a great low rate you can get online, go to The General and save some time. How fast are Allegra gel caps? Their fun shouldn't wait fast. My girlfriend got a new puppy fast. For your toughest symptoms, non-drowsy Allegra provides noticeable relief in just one hour. Two times faster than Claritin. Ready to hit the road fast. Not just fast, Allegra fast. The one thing I've learned about life is you can't get complacent. That's when your quality of work starts to slip. I look back on my career now and I'm very humbled, but I don't dwell on the past. I keep trying to better myself because there's always somebody there trying to knock you down. Introducing BetAmerica.com, your new home for online wagering. Sign up today and get a $300 deposit bonus. It's time to play the Bet America way. 
At Southern New Hampshire University, we're committed to your success. That's why we hit the road again, to meet some of the 50,000 students who study online with us, to hear their stories, to celebrate their success. And with over 200 programs online and on campus designed to fit your life, there's never been a better time to see yourself succeed. Find your program today at snhu.edu. Attention parents of children with cerebral palsy. If you suspect a medical mistake may have occurred at or near the time of birth, call Science and Kirk for a free legal consultation. Financial compensation may be available for children diagnosed with cerebral palsy, Herb's palsy, or another birth injury. A lifetime of medical care can cost millions of dollars. Protect your child and find out what legal rights may be available. Call 1-800-215-1697. Welcome back. They call it the New Meadowlands, and this facility opened up in the fall of 2013, state of the art. It has opened to rave reviews. Everybody loves it, and you can see the huge crowd on hand today. Unofficial results, at least top three spots in the Kane Pace. We can't give you the official payouts yet because, Dave, there is an inquiry for the third spot. And, Gary, it is against the unofficial third-place finisher. That's number one, Dudes the Man, for some possible interference in forcing himself out on the final turn. As we speak, the, the stewards up in the judges' stand are looking at the tape. You can actually see the uh, drivers and winning connections looking to the tote board, waiting for the uh, result to become official. But we can speak to the unofficial winning connections. For that, let's go to Justin Horowitz. I'm here with winning driver David Miller, the Hall of Famer, and wow, Delta winner picked a great time to win his first race of the year with that world record performance. He sure did. He, uh, he raced tremendous. He's been racing very well. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, the fraction set up for him today, the race set up real good for him, but, uh, you know, you can't take nothing away from him. He did the rest. As good as we've seen Wiggle It, Jiggle It race, were you surprised at how easily you went by him in the stretch? Well, that was a pretty big half, you know, and I, he got run out really, really hard. Uh, you know what, I, I thought if, uh, if he held up under them conditions, he, he is, was a super horse, and uh, when I got to him, uh, I was getting by him pretty easy. Well, you've never won a Hambletonian. Do you think you can pull off another big upset today with Uncle Lasse? You know, it's going to have to be a miracle. Um, you know, there's about three of them in there inside of him. Uh, they're pretty good right now, and uh, he raced well in his elimination, but he drew out. You know, that kind of hurt him there, so going to need some luck. Well, congratulations. A huge performance. Delta winner, a 26-1 to upset in the Cane Pace, guys. All right, Justin, thanks so much. Uh, big, uh, big long shot for Dave Miller there and one in the Hamiltonian as well. As we look at the morning line odds, because we haven't gotten farther than that yet for the 90th edition of the Hamiltonian, as we said, we had two eliminations earlier, Dave, six to five on Mission Brief. And that does not surprise me, Gary. It will just be a, a mystery as to what she will go off at post time. There will be many fans who will back Pinkman off his super elimination victory from post 10 and with the driver change to uh, Brian Sears. But look at the way the field lines up there. Jimmy Tactor drew the inside post there with the bank and Pinkman. They're inside of Mission Brief. So we've got another interesting final coming up. All right, we're looking forward to that. The 90th Hamiltonian is the showcase event on our program this afternoon. We've got the Hamiltonian Oaks straight ahead, and we had two eliminations for the Oaks last weekend. And Dave, what happens from time to time in the sport of harness racing and in other walks of life as well, other endeavors, is tragedy strikes. It did last week in the Hamiltonian Oaks Slim after the uh, after the limit itself. All of horse racing, Gary, is a game of highs and lows. And earlier this week, the harness racing industry was devastated to learn of the passing of uh, Oaks a Limb winner, Spirit to Win. On Monday, preparing for her morning workout, she somehow got loose from her handlers, fell, and did not survive the fall. We pay homage to her there with her win in the Dell Miller Memorial a couple of weeks ago, where she actually got by and beat Mission Brief. So our sincere condolences go out to trainer Dustin Jones and the owners behind this magnificent filly. Yeah, the, these horses become part of the family, so condolences certainly in order here to the connections of Spirit to Win. She had the spirit to win that Hamiltonian Oaks Elim. Uh, and of course, she will not compete, was replaced by Classical Annie, who was on the also eligible list. She will make the Hamiltonian Oaks final today. So that's what we have. Wild Honey is one of our major contenders in here. And Wild Honey will pick up the services of Yannick Jingra for Jimmy Tactor, who's going for his fifth 
Hamiltonian Oaks win. And Wild Honey's last win in a race, Gary, came back in June. But a lot of keys that are in her favor here. She moves to an inside post after her elimination. And the switch to Yannick Shingra to me is the ultimate sign of confidence from trainer Jimmy Tactor. When he makes that move, they're ready to go. And how about Lockdown Lindy? She really just bottomed out the field last week in her elimination. She rode a six race losing streak into that elim, but it was a real coming out party, uh, gaining faith from her trainer, Tony Alanya, who said she was a good filly all along. And living in the fast lane for the Millers, will it be Miller time? Andy Miller, the driver, his wife, Julie Miller, the trainer, a lot of speed here and particularly good gate speed. And Andy owns an Oaks upset win 2008 with Creamy Mimi. It's a good name for a horse, Gary. She is fast and she will make her presence felt. If the trip works out, she could land in the winner's circle. Well, the Hamiltonian is coming up later, but the Oaks post parade is straight ahead. It's the rooftop terrace. Great view of the racing action. Have you ever dreamed of winning trotting's ultimate prize, the Hamiltonian? Diamond Creek Farm can help make that dream a reality. Diamond Creek's yearlings are bred and raised to become champion racehorses. And purchasing one at the fall seals gives you every chance to make it to the promised land. See pedigrees and videos at diamondcreekfarm.com. a lot of things with books and CDs. But to actually learn a language, you can do better with Babbel. Learning a language with Babbel is intuitive. It's interactive. It's customized to your pace. Download the app or go to Babbel.com right now and start learning today. Learning languages? Babbel. Box erasers. Hold on one second. This is not enough. That's all I have. Um, how about the watch? It's my grandfather's watch. It's nice. And the belt. And I'll need that shirt too. There you go. Thank you. Still getting beat up by high razor prices? DollarShapeClub.com ships amazing razors for just a few bucks. Imagine a world with thousands of characters. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! And thousands of weapons. Uh, oh, uh, that's what I'm talking about! Epic gameplay. How about a little backup? I did not expect this kind of turnout. A dragon? You gotta be kidding me! Gamefly. Start your free trial at Gamefly.com. Product shown rated E through M. This is the feeling of turning a game you love into a lifetime of cash. DraftKings.com, the daily fantasy golf destination, is giving away $3.3 million in golf's next major and winning simple. Just pick your sport, pick your players, and pick up your cash. Play with promo code CART this week and get free entry in golf's next major August 13th. Winner gets $1 million. Get to DraftKings.com now. Welcome back, everybody. Well, now we have the official results of the Kane Pace first jewel and the triple crown of pacing and 5560. How'd you like to be dealt that winner? Dealt the winner wins it for David Miller and trainer Mark Silver. All right, time now for the Hamiltonian Oaks. There's a look at the hardware if you get to the finish line first in this event. 45th edition. Right now, it is time for the All-Star Buglers calling the horses to the post.
All-Star Buglers calling the horses onto the track for the 2015 edition of the Hamiltonian Oaks. Half a million dollars on the line, and it is time for us to take a look at the field. And we'll start with the one, Lockdown Lindy, who was an elimination winner. Huge effort last week in her limb, scoring by two lanes in a lifetime best 151 and four for Tim Tietrick, who goes for his third Oaks win. And he sounded very confident that this filly was peaking at the right time. She's a daughter of Lucky Chucky, and she's owned by a conglomerate of sorts, Gary. The Mystical Marker Farms, the Crawford Partners, Albert and Michelle Crawford, who sponsor the Meadowlands Pace, Joe Sabraco out of Ohio, and the In the Gym Partners, they're friends of mine, John Federa and Steve Weenie. Good luck, guys. Number two is Wild Honey, second a lockdown. Lindy last week from post seven, draws inside, gets Yannick Jingra, who's looking for back-to-back -back wins in this race. And this is the filly that would have been John Campbell's drive if not for the injury last Friday. Jingra is familiar with her. He's driven her to stakes wins before, so he certainly knows her well. Both favorites here, Lockdown Lindy and Wild Honey, bred by the Lindy Farms, the Antonacci family, which is a name most aligned with Hamiltonian success. And waiting for the three bright baby blues to get David Miller in the bike. Of course, David Miller won the cane pace, so he was a little bit late getting back to the paddock. And we'll have a look at bright baby blues in just a couple of moments. But there's a look at the four. Lady Winona seems overmatched today, but, you know, driver Brian Sears has a couple of Oaks wins to his credit, including one with 2013 Horse of the Year, be a magician who just got beat earlier on the card today. Lady Winona is one of two finalists trained by Julie Miller in here. This filly by Hambo runner-up credit winner was the field's most expensive yearling purchase at $155,000 at the Harrisburg sale. The ownership line is called Stroy Incorporated, and that is a partnership of Julie Miller and Natalia Stroy. Brian Sears, he's been known to win with long shots before, especially in spots like this. Big price, 48 to 1, no surprise there. Definitely an outsider. And now we will take a look at the three bright baby blues who will move on to the racetrack for David Miller. They call him the Buckeye, one of his nicknames. He's got a, a couple. David Miller pulled off a 57-1 upset in the Oaks three years ago with personal style and has another long shot here, although currently at 8-1 to one on the board for Miller and trainer Bob Stewart. And David Miller just shocked us in the cane, so why couldn't it happen again? She may be a long shot, but I give this homebred more than a fighting chance in this spot. She's trained by Kentucky and Bob Stewart, who campaigned the Steyer, and this filly's damn bar slide won the Oaks in 2010 for the same connections. Mitch Skolnick's Bluestone Farms and Ricky Caldwell. Number five, rules of the road. Fourth in her limb. Nice 52 and three win at the Meadowlands. Two starts back. Probably why her connections decided to give her a start here. And this is the race's other female trainer, New York based Janice Connor. She's a daughter of Hamiltonian champion Muscle Hill driver Corey Callahan seeking his first win in his third straight appearance in the race. And Dave, number six, Classical Annie drawing in off the also eligible list. It would be a big surprise if she won, but the Oaks is known for those surprises. 30 to 1, she started on the morning line for trainer Jim Marlage, Brett Miller, and owners Laura Baker, John Schmucker, and Tom York. Number seven, living in the fast lane. Consistent fast and well connected. This is the Toronto team of owners. Marvin Katz, Al Libfeld, Sam Goldbed, also named synonymous with trotting blue bloods. She's a daughter of Donato Hanover, but she lost her last two at odds on on the front end. Will she change tactics from post seven? That might be the key to the race. Again, Andy Miller has won the Oaks in upset fashion in the past. Number eight, Sarsi, third in her limb from post two, draws outside today, hasn't shown any speed away from the gate. Tough task for Team Tactor. She owns the ultimate pedigree in the race. Her sire, Donato Hanover, won a Hamiltonian in 2007. Her dam, South Windelaire, captured the Oaks in 2003. You can't be any better bred than that. Number nine is Smokin' Mambo, a non-factor at three to one from post eight in her elimination. No help in the draw for today's final either as she winds up one spot farther out, post nine. She cost only $15,000 as a yearling, goes to the gate for co-owner and Pennsylvania-based trainer Chris Bieber. You said no luck at the post draws here. Post eight in the limb, but she did make it. Post nine today as driver Aaron Merriman's choice over Classical Annie. 
And around out the field of 10, it's number 10, Speak to Me, one of three in the race for trainer Jimmy Tactor, who is going for back-to-back -back wins in the Oaks and his fifth Oaks victory overall. She might be the longest shot in the race because of the post here uh, for George Siegel's Brittany Farms. Lifetime Pursuit was their winner last year, Brittany Farms. Her sire, Muscle Massive, was a Hamiltonian champion. She wasn't much of a threat in last week's elimination. This post is a real killer, even with the Z-Man, Scott Zeron. And that'll look at the field for the 2015 Hambletonian Oaks. Right now, let's go over to Justin Horowitz. He's standing by with Julie Miller. Justin. Thanks, Gary. Julie, last year in the Oaks, you started three Phillies, but none of them were driven by your husband, Andy Miller, as he recovered from a serious back injury, suffered in an accident. To have him back with living in the fast lane and have a big shot today, how does that make you feel? You know, it's hard for me not to get emotional about that um, question because um, it was hard last year. I'm not going to deny it. It was challenging not having Andy in here full time, but he's back. He's better than ever, and um, I look for a great race. Living in the fast lane, stepped on a nail and had to be scratched, and then she's getting over some sickness. How close to 100% is she today? You know, unfortunately, I don't think she is 100%, but I told Andy this is what we work on all winter long and practice for and, you know, give her a chance. Julie Miller had the beaten favorite last year. If she wins today, she'd be the first woman to win the Hamiltonian Oaks. Guys, back to you. All right, Justin, thanks so much. We have the Hamiltonian Oaks 2015 edition coming up after this quick timeout. The world's leading breeder, Hanover Shoe Farms, is proud to present our 2015 yearling consignment selling at Lexington October 5th and 6th and at Harrisburg November 2nd through 4th featuring several outstanding first foals including Aunt Susie Hanover, a credit winner filly out of Aunt Mel, Gerard Hanover, a Cantab Hall colt out of Global Desire, and Cameron Hanover, a colt by Donato Hanover out of Candor Hanover. Hanover Shoe Farms, find your champion today. Harness Racing stars come alive at the Harness Racing Museum and Hall of Fame in Goshen, New York. Ride our exciting 3D harness race simulator. Explore the Harness Racing Museum's new exhibit, Remember Roosevelt. Touch equipment used by Hall of Famers, Del Miller, Stanley Dancer, and Billy Houghton. See memorabilia from the Hamiltonian and the Little Brown Jug. Visit our gift shop and watch horses train at Goshen Historic Track. If you like harness racing, you will love the Harness Racing Museum. Here we go again. Another day shackled by wires. How long do we have to keep untangling for just a little taste of power? Who knew charging could be so draining? You can keep plugging away, or you can change the way you charge. The Samsung Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge with built-in wireless charging capabilities. Get $200 or more when you buy a Galaxy S6 or S6 Edge and trade in an eligible smartphone. Ready to bend metal and shape your future? UTI is the answer. Our collision repair program can teach you skills in auto body work, framework, welding, painting, and more. You'll get hands-on training from certified instructors and learn specific industry skills in NATEF accredited and ICAR aligned classes. UTI is the industry's choice for technician training and the collision repair field is full of opportunities. It's a great industry to be in. It's a great field to be in. Call now or visit uti.edu for more information about the program. Worried about relocating for school? UTI is here to help you succeed. UTI can help you apply for funding, for training and relocation, assist you in your search for housing and a part-time job, and help you with your job search for a position close to home after you graduate. Your passion to transform cars, combined with the skills you'll learn at UTI, are the perfect combination for a great career. Today's the day. Visit uti.edu or call for more information. Searching for a great used car? Start your search search with the millions of used cars for sale at the new carfax.com. Just say, show me cars with only one owner. Pretty cool. Plus, you get a free Carfax report with every car for sale. Start your used car search at carfax.com. Marsha, what happened? Peter hit me in the nose with a football. No, sweetheart. Shut up! Marsha, eat a Snickers. Why? You get a little hostile when you're hungry. Better? Better. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. <laughs> Welcome back to the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey. The Hamiltonian Oaks Trophy will be lifted shortly. Well, let's take a look at uh, who we like. It's time to put up or shut up. I'm going with 
Wild Honey, good inside post. There you go, inside post. Yannick Chingra for Jimmy Tactor, the ultimate sign of, content, of confidence. Wild Honey. In the year of the woman, I'm going with Julie Miller to become the first female trainer to win the Oaks, living in the fast lane. All right, Justin will be living in the fast lane should uh, that one get home for Team Miller. We're just moments away from the 45th edition of the Hambletonian Oaks. And Dave, the last two Oaks have been the fastest, 2013 Be a Magician, 151 and 4. And then last year for Jimmy Tactor, Lifetime Pursuit set a stakes record of 150 and 4. It was a stakes track and world record for a three year old trotting filly on a mile track. Not necessarily sure that might be in jeopardy today, but it's still one thing to look for. Gary, it's all about the tactics in here. You see the fans are firmly in the corner that you and I are in. Wild Honey is the six to five choice as we speak over Lockdown Lindy. Let's see how it plays out. I expect to see speed from seven living in the fast lane for Andy and Julie Miller. I expect to see an early move from Yannick Shingra with Wild Honey. Lockdown Lindy will be closing. The moment has arrived. Up to track announcer Ken Orkington. All right, guys, we're all set here, and uh, we're going to eat some chalk here with Wild Honey. Was flying late last week for Jimmy Tector. He's got this filly on her toes as the gate swings into the stretch, and we're ready for a start here. Picks up Yannick Jingra looking for his fifth win of the day. We'll swing around here and uh, call the action here in race 12 for a half million dollars. It's the Hamiltonian Oaks final, the 44th Hamiltonian Oaks. Three-year-old filly trotters are on gate, ready for a start. Here they come. Up and trotting, rules of the road gets the first call. Living in the fast lanes out fast. Sarsi from the outside, and Wild Honey, the favorite from the inside, gets away well. Into the first turn, rules of the road. Wild Honey and Johnny Tactor swooping down with Sarsi to challenge early. As they race to the opening quarter mile, it's locked down Lindy. Elimination winner was impressive last week. His fourth here past the quarter. Then comes Bright Baby Blues and living in the fast lane with Lady Winona. Next is Classical Annie at the back. Smoking Mambo and Speak to Me. 27 for the first quarter. Two wide in the back straights. Rules of the road, not for long. Here comes Wild Honey and Yannick Jingrush strides up, dashes up and takes the lead. Wild Honey here at six to five favorite. A methodical move to the front. Rules of the road back in second. Lock down Lindy off stride after tipping to the outside. Sarcy is third. Bright Baby Blues to the outside fourth. Living in the fast lane picks up that cover fifth at the half. Then it's Lady Winona on the inside with Smoke and Mambo and Classical Annie to the outside. Speak to me. On a break, lockdown Lindy way back the half, a rated 56 and one. So Yannick Jingra slowed it down, 29 and one, second quarter rating. Wild Honey with the tactical advantage here. Bright Baby Blues comes up to apply pressure. Rules of the road is locked in the box, living in the fast lane. Andy Miller sitting in a golden spot, second over and coming three wide right now. Looking for room is Sarcy buried with Trot there. Smoking Mambo looks to swing to the outside here, third over as they turn for home. But it's Wild Honey, the one to knock off. Three quarters, 125 and one. Perfect rating by Jingra. Wild Honey, Bright Baby Blues on the outside, bearing down on her. Wild Honey, Bright Baby Blues, and rolls of the road looking for an upset. Wild Honey trying to hold on. Bright Baby Blues on the outside, splitting them as Rules of the Road. Wild Honey, Yannick Jingra wins the Oaks again. Then Rules of the Road. Bright Baby Blues. Then it was close between Living in the Fast Lane and Sarsi. Wild Honey in 152 and 2. Wild Honey and Yannick Jingra back to back wins for Yannick Jingra, and that makes a total of five in the Hambletonian Oaks for trainer Jimmy Tactor. Third win on the year and seven starts off a second place finish in her Hambletonian Oaks elimination. Her 13th lifetime win out of just 19 starts. And this was the perfect drive, Gary. An early move to the front by Yannick Jingra with Wild Honey. He was then able to relax his filly through the middle half, that third quarter, just 29 seconds. At the top of the stretch, when Yannick Jingra picks up the pieces, shakes the line, she draws clear and sprints home in 27 and one to fight off Rules of the road between horses and bright baby blues who drifted just a touch for Dave Miller. So it's 2-5-3 in the Oaks. The perfect drive, the perfect preparation. Nice win for Jimmy Tactor and Yannick Chingra. And lockdown Lindy who took the early lead and then 
gave it up and sat fourth. As she was making a move from fourth, she made a break. And two starts back in the Zweig at Vernon Downs, she made a break as well. She made two breaks over her last three starts. Phillies will do that, but that was why Wild Honey was able to relax during the middle part of the race there. She saved just enough energy to be able to sprint home and hold on safely. Good effort from Rules of the Road. Nice drive by Corey Callahan there to get second. And Bright Baby Blues, she had to come uncovered on the outside to challenge. She held well through the stretch despite drifting just a little bit. A three-year-old filly by Cantab Hall. Wild Honey wins the Oaks. We'll be back with the official results when we return to the Meadowlands. White Birch Farm is the ultimate standard bread facility with a spacious 5 8 mile track, a sand jog track, and a straight strip and a relaxed, stress-free atmosphere. With roomy, well-ventilated barns and stalls and numerous turnout paddocks, White Birch is a horse haven for many top stables. Other amenities include a necklaceizer and a brand new equine swimming pool on construction. White Birch is the breeder of Pace of the Year Captain Treacherous by your next champion from their strong consignments at the sales this fall. White Birch, the Cadillac of standard bread facilities. Ready for a start, here they come. This summer, the real competition begins at Mohawk Racetrack. They're off and pacing. The best harness racing in North America. The fastest three quarters. Five days a week, from now to October, 200,000 per day in purses. It's your chance, your opportunity. The summer meet at Mohawk Racetrack. Rushes up on the far outside. You've got to race here. For more information, go to mohawkracetrack.com. From the very start, I wanted Fitcore to be different. If you come to me, it's it's because you want to do what I do because I don't do what other people do. It's kind of like creating a brand for myself. Your business is unique. Your marketing should be too. With Vistaprint, it will be. Put your personal touch on 500 business cards starting at just $9.99. Just enter promo code TV500 at Vistaprint.com. Stay true to yourself. You can do this how you want to do it, and somebody else is going to think that's awesome and want to do it that way too. Vistaprint.com. We needed 30 new hires for our call center. I'm spending too much time hiring and not enough time in my kitchen. Need to hire fast? Go to ZipRecruiter.com and post your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards with a single click. Then simply select the best candidates from one easy to review list. You put up one post and the next day you have all these candidates. It makes my job a lot easier. Over 400,000 businesses have already used ZipRecruiter and now you can use ZipRecruiter for free. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash offer 17. Forge of Empires. Develop your own city from the Stone Age to modernity. Available in the App Store and at foe.tv. Forge of Empires. Play now. How fast are Allegra gel caps? What a nice surprise, fast. Parties moved outside, fast. For your toughest symptoms, non-drowsy Allegra provides noticeable relief in just one hour. I'm not missing the hayride, fast. Allegra gel caps, not just fast, Allegra fast. French's, America's favorite mustard, introduces the flavors you crave. New sweet yellow mustard with brown sugar and spicy yellow mustard with a hint of cayenne pepper. New French's flavors, the French's way. Also try our new ketchup. Welcome back, everybody. The Hambletonian Oaks official and in the books. Wild Honey, $4.60 on the front end. Rules of the road, big price in the middle. Bright Baby Blues was third. Wild Honey for Yannick Shingra, Jimmy Tactor, and Tactor Fielding Liverman and Fielding. You read those names a lot when you're talking about Jimmy Tactor trained horses. Right now, Justin Horowitz standing by with a driver who's having a great Hambo day, Justin. Thanks very much, Gary. Yannick Chingra becomes the third driver to win back-to-back -back Hamiltonian Oaks. When you made the front with Wild Honey, was it really that simple? Any anxious moments from there? Well, it turned out to be no anxious moment. I was worried about uh, Lockdown Lindy, but uh, when I saw that David was coming first over, and then I looked back, and uh, Andy was second over, so I figured that she had, unfortunately for them, made a break. You win the Oaks now for Jimmy Tactor, but in about 20 minutes, you're going to drive against Jimmy Tactor. You picked off of his Pinkman to drive against him with Mission Brief. Is that kind of awkward right now? 
No, I mean, it's, it was, it's business, you know what I mean? Like, you, you can't, I can't drive them both, and uh, uh, no, we won this race, so that's, it's all good. It's all about turning the page and moving on. Yannick Jingra wins back-to-back -back Hamiltonian Oaks, guys. All right, Justin, thanks so much. The crowd enjoying a perfect day for racing, what Mother Nature is providing, and on the racetrack as well. Still the morning line odds for the 90th edition of the Hamiltonian. Pinkman at 5-2, to two, but it is the Philly Mission Brief, 6-5. to five. Dave, 2007 Pampered Princess, last to compete in the Hamiltonian. She did not meet success, and coincidentally, she was trained by, by Jimmy Tactor. By Jimmy Tactor. Sometimes it's the same names all over the place, but I'm anxious to see, Gary, just how big of a favorite the fans make Mission Brief. Yannick Jingra made his choice. Now the fans who bet their dollars are going to step in. Are we going to have a 2-5 to five favorite, a 3-5 to five favorite, or will there still be support for Pinkman with Brian Sears now? I've got a feeling it'll somehow level out. I think Darren zakali has got the morning line just about right. Well, earlier in the week, we visited with Mission Brief's trainer, Ron Burke, at Gateway Farm about an hour from the Meadowlands. To say that he considers the Hamiltonian as special as it gets would be an understatement. The Hamiltonian to us is the triple crown of harness racing wrapped into one day. Christian, Jimmy Tector, it's a Tectortonian! Did it! When they have a lot of these races, they have a Philly division and a Colt division. If you want to take your Philly and try to beat the Colts, there's plenty of opportunities. There's other races that you can do it. It's just not done that often because it's very hard and you need a special horse. So, you know, we think we have a special horse and uh, we're going to give it a shot and hopefully it works out. Mission Brief in 152 and 2, and that equals the world record. The difference between her and I think other Phillies and even the Colts that mostly you see is she more looks like a thoroughbred. She's longer, she's, you know, gaunt, and it makes her look racier, but by the same thing, I think that's where she generates her speed. There's just so much spring to her with every step that she goes, and I think that separates her from most horses. And it's Mission Brief, the world's fastest two-year-old trotter, is now a Breeders' Crown winner in 151 and 4. The early days of Mission Brief began with us going to the Lexington sale. And like I know other people say this, but this is the truth. She is the one horse we said we were going to buy. And training down at first, she was very erratic, but she would show blinding speed at parts. And you kept thinking, if she gets this down, she's going to be a very, very good filly. First qualifier, we were like, this is one of the best horses, if not the best horse we've ever had feeling good. Usually she's nervous, but today she seems to be enjoying the attention. Winning the Hamiltonian would be very important to me as it is to anybody in our sport. It's the greatest stage of harness racing that we have. So, you know, she is a filly that my father broke and that, you know, there's not going to be a, a, a thousand more horses that my father's going to break that we're going to race together. So for us as a family, it's something that we would love to accomplish and it would even be better if we accomplished it together. The Colt division is the glamour division. You go for more money. You go for more prestige. If you think you have the Philly that's better than the Colts, why settle for second best? Take on the best and find out if you are that right or if you're not that right. And I do. I think I have the best Philly out there, and I think she's better than the Colts. That's, I mean, mission brief. Like I said before, I live and die by her. You know, it, it, it's going to be the horse this year that makes my year or crushes my year. I won't cry if I lose. I will cry if I win, I bet. But I know it'll be an overwhelming feeling, and you know, I probably, especially my father is an emotional person, and I, like sometimes, like he can break me down. Ron Burke also a uh, chip off the old block, like his dad, a bit emotional there, and who can blame him? This is a huge, huge moment uh, for the Burke family. Gary, they've taken the ultimate gamble, and so far it's paying off. Now the Philly Mission Brief is the one that has to get to the wire first. And look at what the fans have made Mission Brief again. One to nine, the lowest odds possible on the tote board. I think she'll go up a little bit by the time they spring the gate uh, for the 90th Hamiltonian, but uh, one to nine? 
Uh, I'm not actually that surprised right at the moment. There's still time until uh, the race takes off. All right, Dave, we had a couple of uh, eliminations earlier today. We want to know how these horses got to the final. What's interesting here is how they made it to the final. Two different uh, winning styles. They did. Here's Pinkman and Yannick Shingra on the outside. You see his 10. He started from post 10, blasted out to the front, yielded, stalked, and then surged by late. It was a good workmanlike effort. That's what he does. But then again, here is the ultimate performance. How devastating is Mission Brief right here? You see Yannick Jingra reining her in, trying to save a little something for the final. She made it look effortless. She looked brilliant. And if she's that good again, it, they may be all racing for second. I mean, wouldn't you think that that gives her a bit of an advantage? I mean, they're pretty close in post positions here, post two, post four. The fact that she was able to coast to the wire where Pinkman from post number 10, he was full out. Jingra had the ear uh, plugs out. You saw those little balls hanging next to his head. I think that uh, the Philly here, Mission Brief, gets a little bit of an edge coming out of the Olympics. That just goes to show you how different the styles are of the two favorites. Mission Brief is incredible. She glides, and when she's right, she's spectacular. Pinkman just digs in and beats you. So we're going to see. Hopefully these two, when they turn for home, they'll be close enough together. We're going to find out who's got more guts, who's ready to race for the second time today, and who becomes the 90th Hamiltonian champion. Well, they both look pretty good right now in their stalls getting ready for the Hamiltonian final. The bank currently at 9-1 to one, was a very solid second to his stablemate Pinkman in the elimination earlier today and has been a very solid performer all along. Actually had the season's mark of 150-4 and four, set in a division of the Dancer Memorial back on July 18th. So the bank as Jimmy Tactor is loaded once again the 2015 Hamiltonian Post Parade is coming up next. Here in the Garden State we're for shore days and sand castles. Prize winners and thrill riders. Campfire chats and fishing buddies historic lights and romantic sights, friendly creatures and family fun. If you're for good times and great memories, we're New Jersey and we're for you. Plan your getaway at visitnj.org. The world is full of compromises, but not here, not on this day, not in this race, not in this sport. Every bet is a hope. Return on investment comes in seconds. This is Harness Racing. We welcome you to the Harness Racing Fan Zone. See it all for yourself. Feel it in all the passion. Share that experience with others. The Harness Racing Fan Zone puts you in the driver's seat. Every backyard comes together around the grill and Kingsford charcoal. Gather around. Scott and Susan just met online. Scott wants to get together for a cup of coffee in an hour, but Susan doesn't have car insurance. Scott suggests she get a free anonymous online quote from the general. Monthly payments are low. She can choose her payment due date and receive instant proof of insurance. Scott and Susan are getting along marvelously. Get an anonymous online quote now. For a great low rate you can get online, go to the general and save some time. This is the feeling of turning a game you love into a lifetime of cash. DraftKings.com, the daily fantasy golf destination is giving away $3.3 million in golf's next major and winning simple. Just pick your sport, pick your players, and pick up your cash. Play with promo code CART this week and get free entry in golf's next major August 13th. Winner gets $1 million. Get to DraftKings.com now. Families may trust nursing homes to provide a safe environment and quality care for their loved ones, but it is important to know the warning signs of abuse and neglect. Warning signs may include broken bones, bed sores, and malnutrition. If you suspect a loved one is suffering abuse or neglect, you can speak with an attorney to help protect their rights. Call Sokolov Law for a free legal consultation, 1-800-966-9950. That's 1-800-966-9950. I'm a non-attorney spokesperson.
Show on CBS Sports Network. Welcome back. Lots of fun for young and old. That would be the young side of it here. A uh, kitty ride. That's about as close as I can get, Dave, as we take a look at the odds for the 90th Hamiltonian. Once and I still on Mission Brief. Pinkman at 92. Are you surprised by that price? I, I am. I, I think it will definitely become a little bit more equal as we draw closer to post time. Remember, you know, because we didn't know who the finalists are, Gary, there's no advanced betting. So now the fans are digging in with their program pages that have been circulated throughout the track. They're going to do a little more handicapping. Then they're going to decide and make their bet. So most of the money that will be bet in today's Hamiltonian has yet to hit the window. The time has arrived. The Hamiltonian post parade is coming up now. Let's go to the All-American Bugle. Time for us to take a look at field for the 90th edition of the Hamiltonian. There's the one in the bank ramped up his game over the last month or so with steadily improving miles including a season's best 150 and four. Another incredible pedigree here by a champion out of a champion. The classic example of peaking at the right time. The bank is a homebred for Swede Goran Falk who co-owns with Christina Tactor and Goran Anderberg. Johnny Tactor will handle for his brother seeking his first Hamiltonian win as a driver. Number two, Pinkman finished on top and his a limb from the difficult 10 post, probably the most consistent, yes, least flashy of Jimmy Tactor's cavalcade of star performers. Named after the character in that TV series that everybody but me watched, Breaking Bad, <laughs> he will try to do what his sire, Explosive Matter, couldn't win the Hamiltonian. Remember, he's still the Dan Patch champion two year old trotter. He's not flashy, but all he does is win. Number three, Aldebar and Eagle finished second at 80 to one in his Hamiltonian limb. Sire and Dam were both Hamble winners, so this Colt is trying to follow in some really big footsteps. Trainer Jonas Zernison has made the Hamiltonian final eight times, but the best he could do was second. He co-owns this Colt with Aussie Mike Toronto. This is Corey Callahan's third straight Hamiltonian appearance. And of course, number four is the Philly. Mission Brief, we'll see her in a second, was brilliant in her limb. Will she become the 14th Philly in 90 years to win the Hamiltonian? Her legion of fans are hoping for mission accomplished. She's by a horse of the year. Muscle Hill and out of a dam that won a breeder's crown. Some back problems caused trouble earlier in the season, but acupuncture treatments and adjustments have helped. Burke said simply, if we win it, it will change our lives forever. It makes her career. Winning the Hamiltonian changes lives. Number five, French Laundry, looking to take this bunch to the cleaners, if you will, in the uh, Hambo final. And if he does, trainer Jimmy Tactor will join Chuck Sylvester with four Hambo training wins. And another incredible pedigree out of a Hamiltonian champion, out of an Oaks winner, named after the award-winning restaurant in Napa Valley for Chef Thomas Keller that's on my bucket list to go to. If French Laundry wins today and I bet on him, maybe I can afford that check, Gary. Number six, Jackson's Minion came into today on a three race win streak, including an eye opening effort in his last. A polyp removed from his throat may have turned him around. And he came off Lasix for today's Hamiltonian. It's not allowed. He's improved dramatically since that throat surgery. Philadelphia Connections, uh, attorney Howard Taylor and Tom Jackson decided to take a shot after that track record effort last week at the Meadows. Number seven, we'll see in a second here. Uncle Lassie turned into fourth place finish in his limb from post seven. Started this year with four straight wins and is a top Colt, but 22 days off produced the fifth in the Zweig most recently. He races for the Solveig Racing Partners, and that's a long list of folks. They bred the Colt by Donato Hanover. Donato Hanover. They co owned with Goran Falk. Dave Miller has picked up this, the assignment, hoping to fill the only hole in his Hall of Fame resume, Hamiltonian Trophy. And number eight, Donato might finish third in his limb. Trainer driver Tron Smadsammer won the 2004 Hamiltonian, and that year's trotting Triple Crown with Win Song's legacy. Tron is known as the American Viking. He's a 48 year old Norwegian native. He's trained 10 trotting millionaires. We'll see if he can add this one to his list. 
Number nine, Wings of Royalty, trainer George Ducharme won the 2013 Hamiltonian. Tim Tietrich will get the drive here, but the post looks almost impossible. It's an ambitious spot that they even entered, but there's lots of good mojo here. George Ducharme and Tim Tietrich. Number 10, Habitat, trainer Ron Burke's other Hamiltonian. Hopeful is partly made about 800,000. And this was actually Ron Burke's first Hamiltonian finalist since he made it before uh, Pinkman did. Post 10, though, Matt Kikaley, it's nice to see him out there. We'll see if Habitat can make it interesting by leaving the gate strongly. Let's head over to Justin Horowitz. John Campbell, your record 32 straight years in the Ham. Not it. 32 straight years in the Hamiltonian. It ends today. I know you're disappointed, but let's go through Yannick Jingra's mindset here. Tell us what he was thinking when he made the decision to drive Mission Brief instead of Pinkman. Well, he's thinking he's picked the best horse. It's the Hamiltonian. It's a business decision for Yannick. There's no question about that. The personal feelings is going to be on the on the part of uh, Jimmy Tactor because um, you can say yeah it's a business but uh, these the trainer spends you know two years babysitting and getting these horses to mature to get to this level just to get into the Hamiltonian which is a dream come true and you know if, if you get rejected by your driver there are some personal feelings you just can't get around that and uh, you know people handle rejection in different ways but it, to say there aren't any per personal feelings I think there will be some but uh, Yannick's decision it's based on who he thinks can win. Well, we miss having you out there in the Hamiltonian. John Campbell expects to be back in a couple weeks from that broken wrist. Guys, back to you. Tough day to watch it from the sidelines for a John Campbell. He'd love to be out there. We've got the 2015 Hamiltonian. It's coming up next. Fastest, fiercest, and flashiest football on turf. Four walls confine the action, but the intensity is unrestrained. The Rattlers get primed for the playoffs as their high-flying offense hosts the Thunder. Tonight at 9.30 on CBS Sports Network. Al and Michelle Crawford welcome you to Crawford Farms. Located in upstate New York, Crawford Farms houses over 150 fabulously bred broodmares, racehorses, and retirees on 1,000 beautiful acres. Crawford Farms, a boutique breeding operation, sells their top New York, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey yearlings in the Morrisville State Sale and the Lexington Selected Sale. For up-to-date information, visit CrawfordFarms.com. Dennis was in Iraq. They hit an IED, and it did a lot of damage. He has traumatic brain injury, slurring of his speech, not being able to remember things. He thought his life was over. It was overwhelming. I shake all the time. It was very difficult. I don't like depending on anybody. Since I first appealed to you on behalf of our wounded service members over five years ago, the need for Wounded Warrior Project has gotten even greater, and that need will continue to grow for many years to come. That's why I'm asking for your support. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. He was injured November 10th. When I called Wounded Warrior Project, I said, I don't know what to do. The next day, we had appointments for a neurologist, for PT, for OT. Step, take your time, stand up. A year ago, you wouldn't catch me getting out, doing anything, but now I am. You can't go through it alone. To watch my son progress and to know that Wounded Warrior Project and the people that donated, they gave me back my son's life. Because I really, I really didn't think I'd ever have him back again. To join the Advanced Guard monthly giving program, call or go online with your gift of just $19 a month, and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. The Wounded Warrior Project it's been the greatest thing that's ever happened to my son. And they gave my son hope. I'm excited about what the future holds. You can honor and empower those who have sacrificed so much for us. Please call or go online with your gift right now. We were there for the first. We'll be there for the 50th. CBS is the home of Super Bowl 50. 
Welcome back to the 90th edition of the Hambletonian, and this edition headlined by a Philly mission brief, two to five on the board, and Dave Pinkman taking a little bit of action here now at five to two. All right, time for our picks in the Hambletonian. They're handing out pins today, buttons at the racetrack. I know you can't see it, but mine says mission brief. I think you can see mine. It says Pinkman prevails. Let's go for an upset in the 90th Hambletonian. In the year of the woman in sports, it's all about Mission Brief beating the boys today in the Hamiltonian. Those are our selections, and uh, Mission Brief pretty much rules the day, <laughs> Dave. Uh, you're out. You're outvoted here. Uh, That's okay. You're in the minority, <laughs> but I'll tell you what. We we saw her. We were looking at her during the commercial break. She looks super out on the racetrack, and I really think that has something to do with the fact that her elimination was easier than Pinkman's. Although I'm sure he'll come back as tough as nails too. It may be, but this is a relatively high-strung filly, Gary, and for her to look like this at this point, completely relaxed, where Yannick Jingra even has his hands almost out of the handholds, he couldn't possibly be feeling any more confident than he is right now. She couldn't look any better from this spot. She'll start from post four. She'll be on the move early. She'll probably be the last one to the lead and it'll be up to Brian Sears driving Pinkman to be sitting right behind her. And Pinkman he's got a good post number two post and he's got a great driver in Brian Sears who has won a couple of Hambo himself and what a great matchup this is going to be. Will we see our first Philly in 19 years to pick up a Hambletonian victory upstairs to Ken Workington calling this race for his 16th time. Well thanks guys uh, post time now for the 90th Hambletonian as the gate gets set to roll here. We're going to stick with Pinkman here. He was rock solid overcoming post 10 in his elimination over his stablemate the bank mission brief wrapped up as well we'll see if uh, Yannick Jingra made the right choice as they pick up speed we'll sw swing around here and call the one million dollar 90th Hamiltonian full field of 10 three year old trotters and one Philly mission brief she's the favorite three to five here they come. Up and trotting Uncle Lasse with the trotting hobbles added is going to show speed and go for the lead. The Philly Mission Brief just floated away. Inkman from the inside and the bank with speed on the rail. Uncle Lasse and the bank. Tactor 1 2 around the first turn. And Pinkman settles in third. Tactor 1 2 3 right now. Mission Brief is third and looking anxious there to the quarter mile. Alder Baron Eagle fifth on the inside. Donato Might is parked out. And then it's French Laundry pinned in on the rail right now. Then Jackson's Minion and Wings of Royalty and Habitat the trailer. 27 and 2. A quick move now from the bank. Johnny Tactor and the bank to the front. Here comes Pinkman on the move on the outside as they race down the back stretch. Uncle Lasse is third. So Tactor 1, 2, 3 controlling this year in mission brief. The Philly is gapped here. She's a four and a half, five off the lead in the fourth position near the half. Donato Might is parked out in a grind here. Alder Baron Eagle to his inside. And then comes a French laundry and Jackson's minion and wings of royalty and habitat. The half are rated 55 and 2, just 28 seconds. And it's Pinkman, elimination winner one, leads the way with Sears. Pinkman in front. Here comes the other elimination winner, Mission Brief. The Phillies on the move as Jingra's choice. And she takes dead aim at Pinkman. The Dan Patch Award winners are 1 2 here in the Hamiltonian. The bank has gapped the pocket on the inside. Uncle Lasse is fourth. Donato Might stalled fifth. All the Baron Eagle needs racing room past three quarters. Pinkman, Mission Brief now. Back to the cones for a brave enough tuck. 123 and 2 in the stretch of the 90th Hamiltonian. And it's Pinkman, Mission Brief on the outside. Doesn't appear to have it. It's Pinkman and Brian Sears. Mission Brief second. The bank third. Uncle Lasse on the outside. Pinkman, Jenny Tector, Brian Sears. Pinkman holds off the Philly Mission Brief to win the 90th Hamiltonian. Then it was Uncle Lasse and the bank in 151. Pinkman wins the Hamiltonian. Tremendously game in his elimination and once again in the Hambletonian final. That is the third 
winning Hamiltonian drive for Brian Sears. Boy, did he make the right choice here. We'll pick it up, Dave, at the top of the stretch. Brian Sears got lucky to inherit this drive, Gary, but his drive is what won this race. He was more aggressive than Yannick Jingra early. As you can see at this point, Pinkman and Brian Sears have sprinted away. They've got a good, safe, clear distance from Mission Brief, and they're never going to catch the gelding. He becomes the uh, first gelding to win the Hamiltonian since Vivid Photo in 2005. A game and valiant effort by the Philly. She's going to come up just a little bit short. Here's the low mo, as you see. Brian Sears knows he has it won. Yannick Jingra may be a little bit disappointed, but as I saw them pulling up after the race, Gary, a big handshake between Sears and Yannick Jingra. They know it's a business. Brian Sears knows he was lucky today and Yannick Jingra no disappointment there his Philly was game his Philly gave it all she had and came up about a length short to Pinkman who is the two year old trotting cold champion who comes back this year and takes the Hambletonian in the 90th edition and it is the fourth Hambletonian win for Jimmy Tactor. We'll be back with the results and the Winter Circle ceremonies in a moment. Ready for a start. Here they come. This summer, the real competition begins at Mohawk Racetrack. We're off and pacing. The best harness racing in North America. Fastest three quarters. Five days a week. From now to October, 200,000 per day in purses, it's your chance, your opportunity. The summer meet at Mohawk Racetrack. Rushes up on the far outside. You've got to race here. For more information, go to mohawkracetrack.com. The world is full of compromises, but not here. Not on this day. Not in this race. Not in this sport. Every bet is a hope. Return on investment comes in seconds. This is Harness Racing. We welcome you to the Harness Racing Fan Zone. See it all for yourself. Feel it in all the passion. Share that experience with others. The Harness Racing Fan Zone puts you in the driver's seat. This is the feeling of turning a game you love into a lifetime of cash. DraftKings.com, the daily fantasy golf destination is giving away $3.3 million in golf's next major and winning simple. Just pick your sport, pick your players, and pick up your cash. Play with promo code CART this week and get free entry in golf's next major August 13th. Winner gets $1 million. Get to DraftKings.com now. As the season heats up, the boys of summer are at full swing. Now, DirecTV delivers the save of the year with MLB Extra Innings at a special half-season price. Every team, every player, every pitch that paints the playoff picture. Plus, all the action follows you with MLB.tv. That's almost 100 live games a week on any device. This ball game is over! Put yourself in the pennant race with MLB Extra Innings on DirecTV. My cholesterol is borderline. I figure I can worry about it or do something about it. Garlic helps maintain healthy cholesterol safely and naturally. It's pharmacist recommended and it's odor free. I'm taking charge of my cholesterol with Garlic. Shopping online is as easy as it gets. Wouldn't it be great if hiring plumbers, carpenters, and even piano tuners were just as simple? Thanks to Angie's List, now it is. Start shopping online from a list of top rated providers. Visit Angie'sList.com today. This new mom is struggling to get the skates just right. And now she's holding on for dear life. Her kids can see she may have broke her knees. They still love her, though she looks like she's attacked by killer bees. I'm allergic. You don't, don't have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. And welcome back. The 90th Hamiltonian is now official, and it's the Jimmy Tactor Show once again with Mission Brief kind of sandwiched in between for Ron Burke. Pinkman wins it and sets another world record for a three-year-old gelding on a mile track. So in his limb and the final, Pinkman sets a world record. Mission Brief just falling a lane short. Uncle Lasse was third, and the bank was fourth. So 
Tactor, who had four in the final. Jimmy Tactor winds up with three of the top four spots. First, third, and fourth. Yeah. All right. Those are the results. Short price from Pinkman, obviously. Let's go down to Justin Horowitz, who's standing by with the winning connections. Thanks, Gary. I'm here with the unlikely Hamiltonian winning pair, Brian Sears and Jimmy Tactor. I'm going to start with you, Brian. You were just saying this is nice to win the Hamiltonian for the third time. You didn't have to stress about it all week because you weren't planning on driving this horse. No, first off, I got to thank the connections all involved, uh, Herb Lieberman, John Fieldy, and Jimmy Tactor, and everybody involved with this horse. Uh, to get the opportunity to drive a horse like that, I feel so lucky and so fortunate. Um, what a wonderful horse, and, uh, you know, he did all the work, deserves all the credit, but I just got lucky and fell in the right spot. How did Jimmy contact you and say you were going to drive this horse, and did you know? know anything about him other than seeing him race against everyone else? Oh, it was pretty interesting. Uh, in the paddock, Jimmy looked at me and says, you're driving my horse in the handbow. I said, that's all right. I'm fine with that. <laughs> and so that means you picked off Burke. And so, Jimmy Tactor, you win the Hamiltonian again. And you said all along, he's going to win. And it didn't really matter who was driving him, right? No, well, you know, I mean, you want to have some capable guy, you know, and Brian is uh, very good. And, I, of course, you know, Yannick been driving this horse every start. And I understand he was in a tough decision, but, you know, I was very, very surprised that he chose the Philly because to me, you know, this horse looks stronger and better than her in the first heat. And I mean, it's cold, but you know, I mean, you know, that's it's that's how it is. But you know, I mean, I'm so happy, and I thank you, Brian, that you drove the horse, and uh, and uh, you know, it's it's such a great feeling because he is the pure the best in the, in this group. Well, you've done a tremendous job, back-to-back -back world records for Pinkman. I'm standing between a combined seven Hamiltonian wins now. Brian Sears, Jimmy Tactor, back to you guys. All right, Justin. Yeah, seven combined between the two. Three for Sears, four for Tactor and Pinkman. You know, the thing about him, Jimmy has always said he's been his most consistent trotter, and he certainly was not flashy really today. He was just plain good. He was giant. And let's congratulate all of the winning connections here, starting with caretaker Yamara Valadetis. That's her on the right, leading Pinkman back to the Hamiltonian winner's circle here. The ownership group, you've heard these names before. Christina Tactor, John and Jim Fielding, Joyce McClelland, and Herb Liverman, all names synonymous with stakes wins and harness racing success in the past. The breeder was Pat Catarano of New York. He goes by the stable name Onarutac Stable. That's backwards. Uh, just an unbelievable performance. Brian Sears did it. Right now, let's go to Sam McKee of the Meadowlands for the Winter Circle presentation. It was fun. It was good. I America's Trotting Classic, and to make the trophy presentation to the winning connections, it's our pleasure to welcome Mr. Ted Gewertz, noted owner and breeder, second vice president of the Hamiltonian Society, Meadowlands Chairman Jeff Gorell, GM and CEO Jason Settlemore is here, and he'll make presentation to John Fielding, his brother Jim, Herb Liverman, Christina Tactor, and Joyce McClellan. Ted, what a race by Pinkman. It was impressive, to say the least. The two best horses were in contention to the very end and it was a wonderful race and on behalf of the Hamiltonian Society this is the 90th uh, edition 35 at the Meadowlands and I hope for many more and it's a great race to m just to match the occasion and great owners I know all of them and I'm very happy for them well hoist the trophy and hand it over to John and John you've got those sunglasses on because you had some tears in your eyes earlier well it was very emotional Sam and I just want to thank all the connections that were involved. Brian Sears stepped in and did a great job. And of course, my friend and partner, Jimmy Christ and Christina Tactor, have done, an, again, an amazing job. And uh, we've been at this for like 30 years trying to win this trophy. And I'll tell you, this is the greatest thrill that you could ever want in this sport. And uh, I'm just blown away and very honored and happy to be in this situation. And John, you're a guy who's not afraid to make a wager here and there. This is quite a daily double with the Oaks and now the Hamiltonian. Oh yeah, no, no, we're going to be in good shape there. We've uh, got a, I've, I've got a plane to, that we're supposed to catch to go to a party tonight back in Toronto, but I'm going to have to stop at the windows on the way out and, and uh, pick up a couple of reserves. Well, I think there'll be quite a party in New Jersey with the winning connections as well. Take us through the drama after the eliminations. Who was Yannick going to drive? What was going to happen with the post draw? What was going through your mind? Well, as always, you know, we leave all these decisions up to Jimmy, and he always seems to make the right decisions. We got Brian Sears, who everybody knows and is a fantastic, uh, you know, great driver and probably one of the best there ever was when the money's on the line. And uh, so I wasn't worried about it at all, just very confident in Jimmy. 
Congratulations, you've won the Hamiltonian. John and Jim Fielding, Christina Tactor, Joyce McClellan, and Herb Leverman Pinkman, the Hamiltonian champion for 2015. Well, look, we have a little bit of time, so we can go right back to the start of this thing. And I found it interesting here because it looked like, you know, it was Tactor in a sense ganging up on the filly, making sure that all his horses were forwardly placed. And that wasn't by plan, but I was also surprised with the start. Look at the aggressiveness from Dave Miller, who's blasting out Uncle Lassie to the top. Johnny Tactor in the bank says, well, I think I have a better horse than Uncle Lassie, so I'm going to move to the front. Meanwhile, Brian Sears is watching the action of the stable mates sitting there in third and uh, Brian Sears, rather, Yannick Jingra waiting patiently in fourth. It seemed that when the first turn happened and he saw the three tactors in front of him, he decided he was going to be patient and just try to grind up on the outside. A couple of more lead changes here on the backside, but they're not really flying at that point. The quarter was 27 and 2, the half was 55 and 2, not super, super fast. There's Pinkman, there's Brian Sears ready to take over, and I'm sure at this point Brian Sears is confident. He's got plenty of horse left. He knows that Mission brief will be coming along at some point but it was going to be a matter of two champions which one was going to dig in and which one was going to want it more and finally Jingra gets mission brief geared up on the outside but the fact that she was gapping there was space between her and the third horse on the inside had to be a little bit con uh, concerning but now as she's starting to move you think well you know what Jingra was just sitting back with her, letting the others fight it out, give her a breather. Nobody was coming up behind her to force her to move to the outside so she doesn't get locked in. And right here, she's within striking distance, but you could tell that she's really not making up a ton of ground. It just didn't seem like she had that super stretch kick in the final. And sometimes that happens when you have to race twice in a day. The last quarter was 27 and three. Again, not super fast home, but by that time, Brian Sears had stolen away with Pinkman. And you see, he's not not all out. He's measuring the wire. He knows he's going to get there. He knows he's going to win his third Hamiltonian. The official order of finish, Pinkman, the two-year-old trotting colt champion, wins the 90th Hamiltonian. The Philly Mission Brief second, Uncle Lassie, another tactor trainee, along with the bank, was fourth. Jackson's Minion, and there's the rest of it. French Laundry, the only other tactor horse not to finish in the top five. Jackson's Minion, big long shot, got some money that last check. So the 90th Hamiltonian in the books, an eventful year for both trainer Jimmy Tactor and trainer Ron Burke. The Philly took on the boys, couldn't get it done. For Dave Brower, Justin Horowitz, and our entire crew, I'm Gary Seibel saying so long from the Meadowlands, where Pinkman has won the 2015 Hamiltonian. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. We now send you to the Commerce World's Strongest Man.